I asked you guys to leave me questions on Instagram and I've got them all here so I'm going to answer them. So let's get started. So I've been asked what was my first bike. So my first bike that I ever rode on was a 20 inch bike, little red bike with stabilizers, I couldn't tell you the name. But my first proper mountain bike was a Harrow Extreme X1. So five inches to travel at the front, five inches to travel at the back. It was all right, it was a fairly, you know, entry level 2005 bike. So it wasn't the best, but I really enjoyed riding it. And uh, I'm gonna insert a picture of it on the screen right now. And if I can't find a photo of it, I'm just looking like a pleb with my hands a foot and a half apart. So moving on, we've got Ben Kitchener who says, why did I start cycling? So I started cycling when I was about 12 as a way of getting to school. So I started off as a roadie, I got into it that way. You know, went, went on club rides and things like that. And then my really good friend Callum convinced me that actually the muddier side was the fun side. And here we are, um, he was correct. Uh, however, I didn't really get into cycling properly until probably, ooh, probably June, June 2019 time, um, end of A-levels, distracted me from my A-levels completely, um, and then off to, off to uni in Southampton is when I really, really started cycling every single day, and uh, for fun, and getting really, really into it. So, uh, Ben Kitchener. Again, has asked me a second question, he says, what's the worst accident I've ever had? So the worst accident I've ever had on a bike um, was actually on a road bike, the uh, front quick release skewer. Uh, one of my friends had been messing around with it at school. If he's watching this, he knows exactly who he is. And uh, he hadn't put it back in quickly, uh, properly, in the bike sheds. So I was going down a hill and the front wheel came off and I went straight into the ground and broke my collarbone. Uh, that was not a fun walk home, <laughs> threw the bike in the ditch <laughs> and uh, just walked home, that was not fun. So that was the worst accident I ever had and Luke Purdy is saying what are the plans for the dirt jump bike, are there any upgrades on the cards? Yes there are upgrades on the cards and they're right here. So these are Hope Pro 4 hubs, listen to that, that's, that's, like, that's just pornography isn't it? Uh, Hope Pro 4 hubs and I need to choose what rims I'm going to lace these up to. Uh, I was thinking Halo Chaos but if you've got any suggestions leave it in the comment section down below and I'll have a look and see what I think. Next question. Owen has said what shoes do I use? So he's correctly guessed that I use O'Neill pin shoes. So I use these mainly for street riding because they're quite cheap and street riding just destroys shoes. As you can see I've had these for about a, about two three months now and the tread is pretty much all gone. Um, I think the I think my left foot's a bit worse on this one. Yeah we're going through the toe cap here and uh, we've already got a hole in it here. Uh, they do tend to wear uh, flat pedal shoes, do tend to wear out quite quickly. So I can't hold that against the O'Neills, seeing as I've literally been using them every day. But for actual proper mountain biking, um, I'm always wearing 510 Freeriders. Uh, the reason behind that is just because they are they are miles ahead of the uh, O'Neills in terms of grip. Although they are more expensive and they do wear out a little bit quicker, which is why I haven't been wearing them around for street. I hope that answers your question, Owen. So if you wanted to get a pair of flat pedal shoes just for general riding around, uh, you can't really go wrong with the O'Neill pins, but if you want the best grip, the 510s, but they are almost double the price of the O'Neills. Next question. From Mountain Bike James, where did I start riding? So I grew up in Suffolk, um, so I started riding around Suffolk, just, just on the roads, building, you know, you know those ramps that you built when you put a brick and you put a log and you think you're getting mad airtime, but you've gone about an inch off the ground? Started doing that in my driveway, just like just like everyone does. Um, so that's where I started riding, and then I moved to Southampton in uh, September of 2019, and I just really took off from there. Um, I started riding almost every day because there's much more thing, much more, many more, much more, many more, more riding to do in Southampton. Excuse the fact that I can't speak. So yeah, that's where I started riding. So what else have we got? Uh, Kowalski says hi, hi, um, and then Laura has said, what do I wish I knew 
when I started to ride but didn't know. Um, and that's got to be that I shouldn't buy cheap stuff uh, or stuff that's not designed for what I'm doing because it just doesn't work. Uh, buying buying a cheap bike, buying um, a cheap set of brakes, uh, buying a cheap set of wheels is one I've done. Uh, they just don't work, they just don't last as long as something that is more suitable to the job. Uh, that more suitable thing for the job often costs a little bit more money, but uh, it's not often worth penny pinching. Uh, it's always worth going for the uh, thing that's more suitable. So, and then Jack Acton has asked me, how many 180s can I do in a row? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Probably a few. We'll find out when I'm back on the dirt jump bike and I've got some concrete. And then Finnegram has asked, if I had one week to ride somewhere, where would it be and on what bike? So it would definitely be on my Cannondale Jekyll and it would also be Whistler. Um, <laughs> Whistler's a bit of a dream. Um, so yeah, it'd be Whistler on my Cannondale Jekyll. And then Alex Harding, hi Alex, has said, who's your favorite non-pro rider and who do you feel deserves more recognition? So my favorite non-pro rider Ooh, that's probably Dylan Chalice, um, or Jordan Trials, Jordan Lee. Um, ooh, it's kind of a toss up between the two because I, I know them both personally and they're both great guys. Um, probably going to have to go with Jordan uh, just because he's, he's more Trials rider um, and yeah, I ride with them more often. Uh, so I think he he could go pro if he if he if he, if he wanted to if he if he really wanted to go pro he could go pro, um, but recognition wise, um, Ginger Nut Racing could do with a bit more recognition. Um, I don't really know. I haven't really thought about it enough. That's quite a hard question. I mean, there's some really, really cool riders who have no social media profile. Um, Louis, for example, he's got quite a small social media following, but uh, he's a really, really cool rider, um, really chill guy. Um, I don't really know, is the honest answer. So, next question. When did I start riding mountain bikes? So, as I said earlier, I've been riding mountain bikes since I was around 13 or 14, just messing around in driveways kind of that kind of thing. Uh, I started properly getting into it when I was uh, kind of just finishing A-levels, just moving to uni. So 2019, I'd say I started properly getting into it. But uh, first time I rode a mountain bike was 2013 or something like that. Um, and then MTB Dylan has asked me what my favorite bike I've ever owned is. And there's no question about that. That's got to be my Cannondale Jekyll. Um, that's an awesome bike. And I'm really grateful for Cannondale for sorting that out for me. Um, and then Hazel has asked me, how do I learn new tricks or any for that matter? Um, I really struggled uh, learning tricks um, and that's because I'm terrified. Uh, it scares me and I'm, it do, it, there's nothing to be ashamed of if learning tricks scares you. It's a scary thing to do. Um, so I think you've just got to do it gradually. Um, riding new places really helps so that's something that I didn't know was going to be a thing so obviously I ride an awful lot at Bartley Skate Park in us uh, in Totten um, and then we went for a uh, day away to Winchester uh, I came back to Bartley with all these new ideas and all these new lines and all these more all this more confidence just from riding somewhere else and riding somewhere different because you can get stuck very easily so if you're trying a hip and the only one at your skate park is huge and you go somewhere else and there's a smaller hip that you can ride, you feel more confident to hit that hip and you go back to the other skate park and you go, well, I can hit the big one now. I've got the confidence, I know what I'm doing. Um, so just riding somewhere different really helps. So if you're just always riding on your driveway, try riding at a skate park. Or if you're riding at a skate park, try riding at a different skate park. Um, and also, there's a lot to be said for padding up and just, just hucking it. <laughs> 